So let us continue the uh, post function, the scripted post function that we were working on. So what I want to do is I want to basically add a comment on the linked issues when I make a transition to on hold. So this is the example that uh, I was trying to show you in uh, my recent videos. So we were doing a lot of things uh, with this transition called on hold. And if you watch my previous video, I talked about uh, how to get the linked issues. For example, if I show you this particular uh, issue, which is backend functionality, and for some reason, if you want to send this issue to on hold status, you are making this transition by clicking this button on top. You want to basically let other linked issues know about this uh, change, like we are holding the work. So right now, if you see here, we have four issues that are linked to each other. And in the previous video, we learned how to fetch these uh, linked issues, which is of course not very difficult. So we'll use the same piece of code and we'll add more example, more example scripts to basically add a comment. Simple thing, but it can be really useful. So let us let us do that. And I will copy my code that I previously wrote. And uh, I will go to my post function. And by the way, the, the previous code that we wrote, it worked. We basically did this in the console. And if you want to know the endpoint, you can use this endpoint called REST API 3 slash issue. And if you follow, if you pass the issue key, you can fetch the uh, linked issues in the response in your JSON response somewhere you will get uh, where is it? Let me try to find the linked issues. So yeah, so you have something called as issue links. Now you can always uh, fetch this using of course, uh, just your normal standard uh, endpoint to get the issue details. So we'll go through these issue links and we'll add a comment. So let us uh, go to the workflow. And if I click on the add post function here, and I want to do this in two steps. Uh, number one, I will uh, simply use a snippet post function to do something when uh, you move the issue to on hold. Like for example, I want to maybe in the beginning, just log those linked issues. So when you go to the execution history, after you have done a transition, you can go to the execution history and you can take a look at the log the execution history. And then when we are satisfied with the outcome, then we'll add a comment. So let us uh, add a post function where we have to simply run our own custom code. So I'll give this a name, add comment to linked issues. And if I, I, I'll, I don't really want to add a condition here, I'll go to the code section here and I will add a code, add my code that I can copy from my um, repository. Now we have to do two things. We have to we have to first fetch the linked issues and then we have to add a comment. So when you have to add a comment, you can use this example script. Uh, we will of course use the same script here as it is and uh, will not worry about uh, writing it from scratch. But before we can uh, add a comment, we have to first fetch the linked issues. So I'll probably comment the the code here and I want to add a comment. I want to first fetch the linked issues. So I'll copy the code from my repository. And uh, what I want to do is I want to, of course, uh, change this uh, endpoint where I have the issue key hard coded. So I'll do something like uh, this issue key, which is the variable on top that will have the issue key of the current issue from where you are executing this uh, transition. Now we have, uh, of course, this code. I don't think we need the issue ID and priority name. Maybe we, we, we can, we'll, we'll just leave it as it is. And if I run this code, it will work. Uh, it will, of course, work, work because it worked earlier. Now, what I really want to do is I want to go through each and every issue link and I want to add a comment. So I want to get basically the individual issue keys. So if I, if I run this code, it will basically print, it will basically generate a list it will basically give me a list of all the linked issues, inward and outward both, and it will print it in the log tab. And if you look at the the uh, JSON out, uh, response, you have of course issue links, then within issue links, you have inward issue, uh, and you can also have outward issue. So we have to 
hand, handle both inward and outward separately. And I want to show you this uh, example for handling them separately because maybe you want to just focus on issues that are blocking, issues that are duplicate. So you may want to further do some customization based on the type of the link. And of course, uh, in this example, we are focusing on direction. So if I go back to, about, to my script, I will basically parse this uh, this particular response where I have the issue links. So I'll copy this and uh, I will add some 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 code. Basically, I'll do something like dot each, and uh, I want to do something now. So when I do dot each, I can now go through each and every item in that particular issue links response. Now. At this stage, maybe I want to get the issue key, the individual issue keys, but we have to handle the inward issue and outward issue separately. So what I'll do, and by the way, if you do issue links, you are basically um, focusing on this part, like this particular section here. Now within issue links, you may have further uh, elements like first, first, first one is of course uh, inward issue, second one is again inward issue. So we can again in our code, we can check whether it is inward or outward. So I'll go back to my code and uh, I'll do something like this, inward issue, and I can maybe add a condition if if it exists, if it.inward issue exists in the response, I want to log it separately. So I may want to just copy the logger.info statement from top and uh, I may want to just display here the it dot inward issue dot key. I believe this is what we need, and uh, this is of course inward issue link or inward issue. And if we can also check for outward, if there is a it dot outward issue. If this exists, then do something else. Something else is, of course, in this case, just logging um, the outcome. So let us do this outward issue, and uh, I will change it to out outward. Now I'm I'm showing you this example where I'm handling inward and outward is issue separately because. In case you want to do further processing, in case you want to also limit based on, let us say, type of link, you can do that because you, you can always add condition. Now later on, we'll, we'll probably do something here like uh, add a comment. So we will handle the comment part in just a moment. Add a comment and that is it. So I'll, I'll leave it blank. So we'll, we'll do adding comment part in a moment. Let me first add this and test whether this is working or not. So I'll publish my uh, my draft workflow. And what I'll do, I'll, I don't want to save a backup. No, oh, sorry. I did select no, didn't I? Okay, publish. And uh, I will go back to my issue where I will test, where I will basically execute the post func. I, I want to basically execute this transition so I can check my I can check my execution history. So let us go back to the workflow and go to the diagram mode. Click on hold, post function. And uh, hopefully I'll get some execution history here. So yeah, we do have a, this history. And if I click on it, it should give me the outcome here. So as you can see, we have uh, inward issue and we have outward issue. So we are able to separate the issue keys. And I will go back to my code. And uh, what I'll do, I will now do something for adding a comment. So basically, I want to add a comment to these linked issues based on some condition, which is of course, uh, something that you can add here. Maybe if you want to add a, maybe if you want to add a comment only when the issue is blocking, but 
for the timing we'll just keep it simple so what i want to do i want to basically let us say define uh, my own method so i can call it i can reuse it so i can maybe define a method here and uh, i will give this method a name add comment and in this particular uh, method i want to basically pass in one uh, variable called linked issue and uh, i want to copy this code and paste it so basically i am using my own method to add a comment so let us uh, we can also pass the comment the body comment a uh, comment of the a uh, body of the comment but for the time being um, i'll just type issue moved move to on hold you know what we can also add um, two met two uh, we can pass two parameters like uh, we can we can probably add a comment here that uh, the original issue was moved to on hold so let us pass uh, this original key original issue whatever you want to call it and uh, you can say here in the in the comment body here original issue moved to um on hold so let us uh, do that now and what i want to do is i want to of course uh, pass in the issue key which which we are passing so let us say we have the linked issue which will be the issue uh, issue key of the of the um issue that uh, issues that are linked of course we are doing it one by one so i'll type in here issue key, uh, linked issue and that should be it i believe uh, hopefully it will work and what of course it is not really complete because we have to call this method so what i'll do i'll uh, go to this uh, th th this particular uh, condition here under if i will pass i will call this method add comment and we have to pass two two parameters the first parameter is the original key which is issue key the second one is uh, this one it dot inward issue key and uh, will not do it will will not do it for the outward issue let us leave it as it is and let us test if if this works and uh, if we are able to add a comment so i i will probably update the post function the scripted post function and i will uh, publish it and see if it works or not so let us let us test our code our scripted post function and uh, by the way i have i have i haven't i have not really done uh, proper error handling you need to make sure that you have the permission to add a comment and you need to of course do few things to additional things but i think at least you have a basic framework ready to add a comment so let us uh, try and check if it works or not so i'll execute this on hold transition and when you do this you can then take a look at your linked issues so i'll open all of them so i'll go to my demo 10 which is the first one it's still coming up okay it's a bit slow to load okay no comments yet on this let me move on to the second second issue second linked issue so do we have any comments no no comments let us take a look at the an19 and 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 we do have a, a comment issue moved to on hold again at the same time you have uh, 
you should have a comment. And the good thing is that uh, you, uh, if you look at the code, in my code, I just added a, added the issue key, uh, the original issue key. And with this example, you can understand that you can have traceability, like I just moved, like in Jita, you have issues that are linked to each other. And when you are doing something uh, like maybe some kind of, uh, um, you, you're, you're doing some work which involves updating other issues, you can use this, you use this example. Of course, it's a very simple example. Uh, but when you combine these things, these things together, like how to fetch the linked issues, how to add a comment, how to insert a comment where you also have a reference to the original issue. And of course, you can take a look at the status. If you remember in the code, we didn't really do anything uh, great apart from just adding the issue key. And when you have the issue key mentioned in the comment, Jira will fetch the current status. So if you're looking at, let us say this issue, of course, it is some platform work and you were actually waiting for this to finish, but you're not really sure what happened. Uh, so you can see that the issue that was blocking this issue is right now on hold. So not only you're adding a comment, but the comment also has the up to date uh, status of the original issue. And it is of course, just one example, adding a comment, but you can also do something with this particular issue. So uh, just one example that I want to give you today. And if you're following the videos, the series, the script runner for Jira on cloud series, I'm basically showing you how to do simple, small things. But now I'm also showing you how to combine those things together to do wonderful things and to get the most out of your Jira instance. So that is all I wanted to show and talk about in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much.